Hi, welcome to this lab. In this lab, I'm going to show you how to create an event hub namespace and create event hub within it and also how to create consumer groups within that event hub and finally how to configure event hub capture in such a way any event posted into event hub will be copied into blob storage. Okay, so first of all, let me go into Azure portal and create a resource group. I'm going to call this as Internet of Things RG and in terms of region, I'm going to select North Europe and click on create and now go into the resource group, click on add event hubs, click on it, click on create. I'm going to name this as Rudra Event Hub. Hopefully that is available. And pricing tier, you generally have two options. One is basic, another one is standard. I'm going to go for standard and click on select. The reason I'm going to standard is I can create multiple consumer groups when compared to basic. So click on select and enable Kafka. If you want your Kafka clients in order to interact with Event Hub, just like the way they used to interact with Kafka topics, just enable this and you don't need to do anything. You just need to configure the endpoint within your Kafka clients. Okay. And the second thing is make this namespace zone redundant. I'm going to leave that as it is. Subscription is Azure trainings, resource group is what we created now. Location, North Europe, throughput units. I'm going to select four and enable auto inflate. In case if you are incoming traffic into Azure Event Hub, gone beyond the throughput that is allocated, it will auto inflate. That means it will automatically increase the throughputs. Please be careful if you select this, make sure you have right type of alerts in place in order to get alerted in case of auto inflation. Otherwise you can't predict your costs. Okay. And then click on create. It is generally quick Event Hub creation. So I'm going to wait for its creation. Now our event hub has been successfully deployed. So let's close this, close this, close this, refresh this, and then go into event hub. Let me take you through some of the key settings. First one is shared access policies. Here you can define a policy with the different authorization levels and can either provide to event receiver or event producer. So you can create a shared access policy by clicking here and then let's say send policy and we will give authorization to send events only not listen or manage okay this is just like service bus shared access policies let's click on create now our shared access policy has been successfully created if you click on it then you can see primary key secondary key and also the connection string you need to provide to your event producer in order to post events into event hubs under this event hub namespace okay so let's close this and the next thing is geo recovery here you can able to add dr capability to your event hub basically you can create a secondary namespace in a paid region so whenever your primary region goes down then all the connections will be automatically routed to the secondary namespace okay so you can click on here and then you can start creating the secondary namespace and configure in such a way it will act as a secondary in terms of geo replication. So let's close this. And the third important setting is firewalls and networks. Here you can configure virtual networks or IP address ranges from where you want to accept the connections. Bear in mind this particular settings will be applicable for both even producers and even receivers also. So be careful when you are configuring it and consider all event producers and event receivers. Okay. And if you come down here, here you can add event hubs into this event hubs namespace. So now I'm going to add an event hub. Name is Rudra sensor events, let's say. And partition count. We have two, I'm going to leave that as it is. And message retention, how long you want to retain events within this event hub. You can have up to seven, I think. Yeah, but I don't need more than one anyway. And capture, 
this is where event hubs capture functionality comes into picture you can able to automatically copy the events from the event hub into a blob storage or azure data lake store by configuring it here okay so click on on now you specify two settings one is time window another one is size window whichever reaches the first it will get triggered automatically okay so for example you have 300 mb of data came within three minutes then it will get triggered it won't wait for five minutes in order to capture the events so there are two parameters that you can choose in terms of triggering this capture of events into blob storage or data lake store one is time window and the one is size window so now come down here here we are going to select um, which one we will go with azure storage only and select container i think i already have a container but let's see click on the storage account here event hub blobs let's click on it if you don't have one just create a container and it need not to be public it can be private and click on select and then you can see how the sample capture file formats will be and all those stuff i'm not going to change any of these things and click on create so basically you don't need to create a consumer group or dedicate an application in order to copy the data from events hub into azure blob storage or data lake store this event hub capture configuration will automatically do that for you okay so let's go to that event hub that we just created here also you can configure shared access policies that is applicable for only this event hub instance so you can start adding shared access policies and also if you want to change the existing capture configuration so for example at one point of time you decided to move the events into data lake store rather than azure storage you can configure it here and also if you want to change time window or size window you can configure it here okay and the next thing is consumer groups a default consumer group will always get added for every event hub but we want to configure our own isn't it so let's configure let's say this is logic apps so basically logic apps is the end event receiver for those events we will be accessing from that consumer group okay and the second consumer group i would like to add is let's say stream analytics this is another event receiver that will be using this consumer group in order to access events in those partitions okay let's click on create so that's it we have created two consumer groups now now we need to post the events into this event hub i'm not going to show that now in the subsequent labs and lectures i'm going to show you how to post events into event hub using a custom application and also using iot hub okay so that's it for this lab in this lab i have shown you how to create event hub namespace and go through some of the important settings such as shared access policies geo replication and also firewall and virtual network rules etc and also i have shown you how to create an event hub within that namespace and also how to configure event hub capture functionality in such a way all the events posted into this event hub will be copied into azure blob storage and finally i have shown you how to configure consumer groups within that event hub okay i hope you find this lab useful